Hi everyone, it's Don from Crux Terminatus. Um, yeah, this is the painting and weathering of the hex blade which I built last week. And uh, along the way you'll find out that you need uh, slippers uh, and masking tape for this one. So, uh, grey polyurethane primer from Vallejo, uh, pretty standard there. Um, and then all I'm doing is I'm testing out what kind of colour scheme that I want. As I say, I wanted to challenge myself and go blue, don't know why, just did. Um, and then I, I painted a couple different craggly designs and then picked the uh, stormy grey one. Uh, there's the slippers in action there. Um, all, all us pros use that, obviously. Uh, now, uh, I cut up a, a piece of card to use as a template uh, for this uh, jaggy splinter effect that I'm going for. But in the end, I decided that using uh, masking tape would be much better to be able to conform to the, the shapes of that. So. Here's uh, here's what it looks like when you peel it off. It's just a, a light ghosting or dusting um, of those colours, and a couple of hours later, uh, that's what you're you're left with. Uh, I was really quite pleasantly surprised, if I'm if I'm honest. Uh, so just painting the tracks. I uh, just used uh, black primer for that, and then onto the uh, transfers, and I cut them as close as I dared to the actual paint, and used micro saw and micro set. Um, for the first time and the micro uh, sol stuff was the bomb basically it eats away the, the plastic and just leaves you with the paint um, and that's uh, a really quite a, a cool thing once all that's done it's a coat of satin varnish for me this time usually I use gloss but I decided to try satin varnish and that's me just making up my uh, rivet wash uh, with Van Dyke uh, brown uh, I like that on the um, the uh, storm hammer I built uh, for someone else there and if you've not seen this it's just um, kind of how it works it, it didn't work as well as it usually does because I usually use uh, gloss but this is satin but uh, it does still work so painting all the individual rivets and then painting the the main panels and obviously I make a bit of a mess of it here um, and it just proves the point that you don't have to be too neat because you can always get out of jail free with a cotton bud or a q-tip for our American friends um, and you can basically sort of soak up the, the rest and clean it off with uh, more white spirits. So quite a while later, uh, seriously it took hours and hours and hours and at the end of it I really wished I hadn't bothered and I think, yep, yeah, that's me banging my head off the desk. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so it actually looks pretty cool here. Uh, I put some photographs up online. Uh, a lot of people saying really like it, like the sort of rusty streaks as well. Um, tried not to overdo them, but the temptation to, to do it on the blue is really, really strong because it, it looks so much better uh, with, a, with something else to look at. So I used the, that sort of splinter effect with the rust and then it was time to start making... Oh, there's the, the Vulcan Mega Bolter that I built out of lollipop sticks. Uh, if you haven't seen how I did that, that's in the, the previous video, and that's just the engine compartment there of dusty up and greased it up. Now, what I was doing here was I was uh, painting the, uh, sorry, I was going to say the heavy bolters, because uh, I'd forgot to do that. And this is me making up the mud, so I used that sort of uh, pumice um, stone in the, the, the sort of gel. Uh, and then I put some MIG pigment in, I think that's Dark Earth, um, and then, sorry, it's a granite, that's what that is, and that's Dark Earth from uh, AK, and I mixed it all up and made myself a nice sticky goop, um, does that word translate goop? Yeah, it does, yeah, okay, a uh, big sticky mixture, and then decided that I hadn't made enough, so I used some water, um, and then it wasn't dark enough, so I used some brown foundation paint uh, and got it to the point where I was happy enough to slap it all on there and that's really a trick, ruined the brush by the way, absolutely caned the brush uh, but fair enough, um, it was worth it in the end. So you can see that it takes a long time to build it up gradually but well worth it and then I went over it with some more dark earth. Um, I did lighten it up with light earth or European earth I think they call it now um, and then painted the details in the back. And once it was all put together, I made a sort of uh, scrim net, a camouflage net, and I painted it the same way. And that is that, really. I know people are going to say, oh, that's not a legitimate way to have that. Yeah, I know, I just wanted to show you the uh, the gun and the, um, the, 
the platform at the back with the uh, point defence weapons like the big sort of 50 cals or the heavy stubbers uh, in this day and age. Um, but really, really, um, I obviously I'm a big fan of, sort of Bane Blade type kits anyway. Um, I tried some new rust effects stuff as well, it was quite nice, it was uh, quite good to work with. Uh, painted the sort of shrine thing in the back for the machine spirit. I've also magnetised the aerial, uh, the, the aerial goes up and down, it just rotates um, and if you need to you can take it right off. Um, I also uh, called it, um, uh, well you, you've already seen this uh, as well, the Mzadi uh, which is uh, for Beloved and um, yeah really quite like it and I love the fact that you can make it you know, one of the sort of six variants and all the, the bits come on and off. That's me just showing you what the Vulcan Mega Motor that I made um, looks like. I think I might go back and, and touch that up. Apologies, the mud looks a bit greeny or yellowy there. I'm not too sure. The, the light's not quite right with the camera, but ultimately, lovely kit. So thanks very much for watching, guys. I appreciate it. And if you could please comment, like, and subscribe, would be uh, really grateful. Thanks very much. Cheers. Bye bye.